All right. This question is going to be complicated. If we do it by the book, if we go by the way that the College Board wants to do it, um, it's going to involve some intense algebra. It's, it's basically anytime we have a quadratic and we're being asked with a number of solutions uh, that intersect at exactly one point, we're going to have to use this concept called the discriminant to do that. Um, discriminant. I may have spelled that wrong. Uh, we can do that, and I'll show you that method because I don't know if the way I'm going to show you actually works all the time. But... I really wouldn't want to do this, and there might be a shortcut. So what I would do is I'd say, well, let's just graph the, the equation that we know, right? The y equals 2x squared minus 21x plus 64. And it's just a normal looking problem. And we want to see if it intersects at exactly one point what the value of x is. This is where this gets a little annoying because the other piece of this, y equals 3x plus a is a line, but it's not a nice horizontal line. We have a nice horizontal line then we know that with our parabola, we are focused on the vertex of the parabola because that's the only way for a horizontal line to intersect a parabola once. So that is like the best case scenario for these and that does get tested. So that could come up. But this one, it's got a slope, right? 3x is our slope. This is a slanty line. But I don't know. Let's graph it. Let's just see, right? So y equals 3x. Now, without an a, if a were 0, we can see that this has two intersections, right? It's hitting it here. One and two. So basically what we want to do is we want to see if we can lower it and get it to hit just once, okay? So I might be like, well, let me see. If maybe I can guess and check for A. Maybe I'll get really lucky and A will be something nice. And knowing how the SAT works and how they pick trap answers, I would say it's a good bet that A, even though they don't ask for it, is going to either be uh, it's going to be one of our answer choices. I think it's either going to be negative 8 or negative 6, okay? Um, it's a hunch. It's worth trying because they, they know that at the end here, you might, you know, solve for A as part of the process, which you would need to do, and then accidentally just pick that instead of answering the actual question. So I would just be like, all right, let's see, negative 8. Ooh, that looks good, right? Where does it hit? It hits, what, once? I can't really... Is it is it showing me? It's not letting me click it. I don't know why. Usually it lets me click the point. So it's not letting me click it. It looks like it's hitting once. Let's try negative six just to see. Negative six. Ooh, no. So it looks like it's negative eight. So what I want to do is now I would say, okay, well, what is the coordinate of that? And it kind of looks like it's positive six, right? You can see it. I, I wish I could draw on this, but you can see where it goes down to the axis it's going to be 6. Yeah, the 6. So if you are stuck on time, here's your move. Pick C. And that's the answer, okay? So we got it using this kind of like understanding of the test. And even if they didn't give me answer choices and I had to uh, bubble this as a grid in, a free response question, student produced response, you might just try to be like, okay, I need to lower this line from the 3x position so that it gets – down. If it goes up, it's only going to keep hitting it twice. So I have to I have to go down. So you might be like, okay, let's try like, I don't know, minus four. Oh, not good enough. How about minus six? Oh, not good enough. How about minus 10? Oh, too far, right? So you might be able to, oops, you might be able to kind of guess and check even without the, the, the answer choices. So I guess I should show you the real way because that might not always work. And it's really cool that it does. I don't know why I can't get both of these, why it won't tell me the, the intersection point. It always does for everything else, right? It did before. I don't know. Must be something to do with the calculation. So let's do it. Let's do it the real way. Okay, what would you need to do? Well, uh, if we're doing a system and we want these things to intersect once, first of all, we need to combine the two equations. We're going to use the fact that each is equal to y to do it. So we're going to get uh, 2x squared minus 21x plus 64 is equal to 3x plus a, right? We're finding intersection. It means set the equations equal to each other and solve. So in order to solve a quadratic, we need to move everything to one side. So I'm going to minus the 3x and I'm going to minus the a, which is going to be a little bit of a pain in the neck, but it's okay. So that's going to make this side equal to zero, which is what we want. And here we have 2x squared minus 24x plus 64 minus a. And I'm going to throw some parentheses around 64 minus a. And that's because I can't combine those terms because they're different, right? 64 and A, I, I don't 
I don't know what that A is. I can't mush, mush, mush them together, but I really want to because both of those together are going to give me the C term of this equation, right? This is a parabola in standard form. And this is where that discriminant piece comes in. Because if I want to find the number of x-intercepts, or in this case solutions, to this parabola, I need to think about the discriminant, which is given by b squared minus 4ac. This is part of the quadratic formula. It's the part under the radical. And this part tells me how many x-intercepts there's going to be. If it is equal to 0, then I know that I have exactly one solution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in B, A, and C based on the equation, not based on the A that I have that's in the equation. That's a little bit of a, a trick here. So B is negative 24, so negative 24 squared minus 4, A is 2, and C, this is why I put those parentheses, is this whole thing, 64 minus A. Now let's start cleaning it up. And you can notice that what just happened is I went from having an equation with lots of variables, an A and an X and all these different things, and now I just have one, right? So now I can solve for A using this equation. So 24 squared, we're gonna bring out our calculator. 24 squared is 576 minus, let's just do eight, 64 minus A. And let's start kind of bringing things over. So we'll subtract the 576. We get negative 8 times 64 minus a is equal to negative 576. Let's divide by negative 8. So divided by 8 is 72. So 64 minus a is equal to 72. Subtract 64. And we get negative a is equal to negative uh, 8. So a, or sorry, is equal to positive 8. So a is equal to negative 8. And notice that's what we got before. a was negative 8. Well, again, that's still a trap, right? It's not my answer. They want the value of x where these two things intersect. So um, at this point, even if I hadn't thought to do the guess and check before, I would probably just put my equation, negative 3x minus 8, into this equation, into this graphing calculator, try to see where they intersect without having to do the work. But unfortunately, um, I don't have that ability here. I'm going to try to do the algebra still. Uh, if this point, this equation is y equals 3x minus 8, and I'm still trying to see where they intersect, so I guess I still have to go back to this point here, but instead of subtracting a, I'm subtracting, I'm adding 8. So I'm going to, this is so messy. This is why I would not want to do this. 2x squared minus 21x plus 64 is equal to 3x minus 8. Subtract the 3x, subtract the 3x, add the 8, add the 8, 2x squared minus 24x plus 72 is equal to 0. Oh boy, this is this sucks. Divide by 2 for everything. We get x squared minus 12x plus 36 is equal to 0. And then factor. And because there's one solution, it's actually going to work out really nicely that the factors are the same. x minus 6 times x minus 6. And so x is equal to 6 in both cases. And that was the answer we got. Yeah, I wouldn't do it that way. That's terrible. So I'm not sure yet. We haven't seen that many SAT questions for this new test. I don't know how lucky we're gonna be when it comes to solutions like the guess and check solution that I tried originally, okay? That required some confidence and some cleverness. I'm gonna keep looking for those opportunities and I'll keep putting them in my videos if I can. But the, the good news is if that doesn't work, we have this backup. It's not a nice backup, it's a mess, but it is there and it is consistent. So this idea of the discriminant comes up, it's on the old test, it's gonna be on the new test. It is a, a thing you learn in school, hopefully, and it is a big piece of the SAT regardless. They love to ask what number of solutions when you have a quadratic, so this discriminant idea is something that we're gonna keep seeing. So if you memorize that, you can get these no matter what kind of question type they throw at you, no matter what kind of uh, strategic solutions are open to you, you can always fall back on the traditional algebra.